We're back with A.G. Gary King, and we're talking to him a little bit about uh, a few different uh, areas of his expertise. Uh, we'll, we'll get, uh, I know we're talking about the human trafficking, yes. uh, and we have a very short amount of time here, so let's talk about the mortgage settlements. I know there's a lot of people that would like to know about the settlements and well, how it yes. uh, came about, because there was a lot of issues, there was a lot of mm -hmm. uh, misunderstandings there, misinformation about how to go about it and all that. Very much so. I, I think yeah. a couple of years ago, the attorneys general from, from all of the states started investigating uh, what was then called robo-signing. The, the, you know, the, it was a mortgage servicing issue where uh, perhaps um, different mortgage lenders were, were signing documents and filing with the states for foreclosure where they hadn't really done what they said that they had done in the affidavit. That, that grew into a lawsuit against the five largest lenders in the country Wells Fargo, Citibank, you know, some of, some of the big exactly. banks that people would know about. And um, fairly recently, a few months ago, that resulted in, uh, in a massive settlement, the, the second largest civil settlement ever in this country uh, with those lenders. And, and it provided money to the state of New Mexico as well as, as other states that were settling states to help people that are, uh, are in difficulty with their mortgages. And, and originally, it started out with people that had been foreclosed on, but, but there are now a variety of, of uh, bits of help, I think, where we can help people. Uh, the New Mexico's part of that is about ni over $90 million worth of help, uh, about $11 million in, in a cash settlement that we're going to use to generate uh, a more active unit within the AG's office uh, that can help people with their mortgage issues. So I, I think that we'll have a hotline which should be set up pretty soon. Um, we're looking at, at helping the courts set up a mediation system. We're looking at uh, mortgage counselors uh, around the state that can help people. And, and a lot of it has to do with uh, the whole crisis, the whole housing crisis, correct? A lot of those crimes that went through the foreclosures and all that. So how do they get on your website and what, what sort of help are they getting through your website sure. specifically? We, yeah. we have some folks that are assigned to help on that specifically right now. So our, our website has an easy address. It's just nmag.gov. Okay, and so then we'll have that up yeah, at the... For, good. So yeah. for... Um, and, and once you get to the, the AG's website, you should be able to, uh, to navigate to find a place for, for mortgage assistance or learn more about the mortgage settlement because um, I think that there will be several thousand people in New Mexico at least that, that will be eligible for some assistance under this. Some people that, have, that were foreclosed on will get some uh, cash payment uh, just to deal with the robo-signing issue. It's, it's, it's not enough to save your house. Exactly. It, it is just a, essentially a, a payment that recognizes that there was this robo-signing and other servicing uh, issues that, that people should be compensated for. What about those individuals that stopped paying mm -hmm. uh, simply because there was some confusion there or they just didn't want to pay anymore? So well, are they excluded from mm -hmm. all this or are they still able to get some help? No, I, I, know yeah, I think that that's where the, a lot of the help will come. There, there's about $60 million in assistance that will come from the lenders. Now you have to have one of the five lenders that we settled with. And, uh, and so we in the, in the Attorney's General Office are still trying to figure out how to get this kind of assistance from other lenders that didn't settle. Uh, and, and I think we're having fruitful discussions, I think, to, to solve some of those issues. But if you, uh, if you qualify for the help, the, the banks actually get credit under the settlement for renegotiating certain loans. And so uh, for people that are underwater, there may be some help. Uh, they may be able to get their loan uh, balance reduced. Uh, they may be able to get a lower rate mortgage. Um, th there are a variety of kinds of help. And, and each person, I think, and they know this, has their own special circumstances that apply to their mortgage. And that's why we're setting up a system where we'll have a hotline and mortgage counselors around the state who, who, who won't be working directly for the AG's office. But there are, uh, I think, more than 20 organizations around the state that have HUD certified housing counselors. And so, you know, we're all going to be working together to develop a network where people can come and ask for help. And, and I think a lot of people will, will be able to get some uh, refinancing help or something uh, if they're underwater. And, and primarily, uh, and people have talked about whether this is uh, one of the not so good parts of the settlement, but primarily it will be the people that, that are behind on their mortgage payments that exactly. are going to yep. have access to that help. People that are underwater but continue to make their payments, I think we're continuing to try and find ways legislatively 
or through uh, the new federal agency that's called uh, the Com Consumer Finance Protection Bureau, the CFPB. Uh, that's right. Yeah, and uh, we'll have uh, that up too. If good. You, but we'll direct them to your website that way they can, you know, because I know your uh, website is pretty extensive. It has yes. a lot of the information. And it's our goal to have a whole, a whole yeah. system where people come to, come to our website or they can call the consumer division at the AG's office, which here in Albuquerque, that number is uh, 222-9100. Okay, uh, we'll also that, have that. that, that we'll, we'll have people that know how to forward uh, uh, mortgage holders who have questions to the right part of the agency to give them help there. So yeah, we want to try to make it as accessible as we yeah, can. During the recess, I mean, the last quarter with the housing crisis, it was such a huge, uh, uh, you know, demand for someone helping because. Yes. And I know the AG's office provides a lot of help with consumer yes. protection and all that. But there was it was such a there was so many moving parts to it. it yes. It, everybody couldn't figure out well, where do you really go for help. Mm -hmm. So I think your office handles a huge portion of, of those uh, questions there. We do. And makes it a lot uh, easier for them to just get on there because it's you know, local, it's not something federal. Or, uh, do you work with the federal agencies as far as uh, um, any other, like the housing or anything else? We, we work with federal agencies in a lot of cases, but we just fairly recently had our... Um, with our the DOJ, right? Uh, the, yes, well, with okay. DOJ, with the Department of State, with Homeland Security, you know, in, in yeah, that, various places true. with housing and ur urban development uh, mm -hmm. on, on the mortgage settlement. Um, we, we just had uh, fairly recently a meeting of our Western Attorneys General. We have a, you know, an organization, oh, the Conference yeah. of Western Attorneys General. But we, we had a whole segment one afternoon with enforcement people from the, the Consumer Finance Protection Bureau where we talked about how we can work together to deal with other financial fraud because there still are problems out there and uh, the, one of the things that, that the act that created that bureau did is it gave the state attorneys general enforcement authorities to enforce the federal law. So now okay. we're working with them. Um, so if, if they have short resources, then sometimes we can enforce those. Um, but we work with uh, right now with the Department of Justice on a program uh, and the Department of State where we're training uh, Mexican prosecutors and investigators to, to change to a, a new judicial system there that we think will be much more effective with the populace there and, and this help is them deal right with now. that. Yeah. We, we've been, New Mexico started that training. I started with the uh, Attorney General from Chihuahua to train their investigators and prosecutors. That's now grown to a system where um, more than 20 of the Attorneys General in the U.S. are training all of the Mexican Attorneys General and working with the federal AG's offices in both of our countries. Uh, we, we've trained more than 10,000 prosecutors and investigators in Mexico wow, uh, to deal with a, a change that they're making to, uh, uh, to a, what they call the accusatorial system like, like ours where you have uh, cross-examination and, right. and such. They, they had an inquisitorial system six years ago and they're, tra they're changing to a system that's much more like our system of justice. And so it takes a lot of work and a lot of training with, uh, with law enforcement and with prosecutors on both sides. Changing gears a little bit, how do you feel your uh, tenure was the last, um, since you've been AG? Yes. How, do you, how do you rate your own performance there? You know, I, I, once again, is I, that, that's I, a fair yeah, question, right? I think it's a fair question. Yeah. I, you know, I'm very proud of the work that we've done, and, I, and it's not just me. I, I've had a chance to do a couple of things. I got a chance to argue personally in front of the United States Supreme Court. It's been more than 20 years since an AG argued in the U.S. Supreme Court. And you so recently that, did that, right? Uh, yeah, last year on a DWI case. One of, one of my goals in, in becoming the Attorney General was to work on DWI issues and, and trying to help reduce the, the DWI problem that we have in the state. I did that when, it, when I was in the legislature, too. I carried a lot of legislation on that. But, uh, but my agency has, has vastly improved like our, our Medicaid fraud uh, prosecutions and, and... So you're uh, content with your... Uh, uh, oh, I'm, I'm very content, although I, I don't know, maybe content's not the best word because I always think that we can do better. Of course. Um, yeah. and, and we have had to deal to some extent with the fact that, that all government agencies have had significant budget cuts in the last three Th years. That's very true. And, and we know true. that. I mean, yeah. I, I'm actually not even complaining about that. Everybody had to take budget cuts. But we're trying to provide better service, you know, with less money than we had four years ago. And, and I think that we've really done that. We've I think personally you, you did a pretty decent job. I, I Thank know your you. predecessor too, but then uh, it's a tough job. Yes. It is not an easy job. And most people don't understand how difficult it is. There's so many, uh, you know, sort of like many departments in yes. there and you have to coordinate with everyone. And it's, it's a lot of work. And, and I commend you guys for doing the work you do. I know you do it on behalf of the state. Thank You're you. elected officials. Um, you recently, uh, announced that you were going to be running for governor. 
Correct. Um, and we'll get into that. But uh, before, uh, was there, we got to go for a break in about 15 seconds here. Uh, we'd like to talk about that, and then we'll talk about what you'd like to do in the future as far as uh, what, what you think about the state of our state mm -hmm. and everything. Okay? Excellent. Uh, stay with us. We'll be right back.